Hello, and welcome to our very first episode of The Huntington Way, a show in which we will discuss topics in education. My name is Pearl Sunshine, and I was a high school English teacher for five years before working for um, a tutoring center called Huntington Learning Center with Lenny DeCastro. Um, and I am now their managing director, and I've loved working there so far. And with me is my co-host, Lenny DeCastro. Thank you so much, Pearl. My name is Lenny DeCastro, and I am the franchisee and center director of Huntington Learning Center here in Colorado Springs. My husband and I opened Huntington Learning Center in 2017, and uh, for those of you who doesn't know about Huntington, Huntington Learning Center is a tutoring center where students can come and get help for academic skills and foundational skills in reading, writing, and math. We also help students improve their standardized testing, such as SAT, ACT, and we also help students with specific subject tutoring. Absolutely, yeah. So lots of great options for getting help. So now that our listeners know a little bit more about us, let's get right to it. Sure. It's been two years since the COVID shutdown began, and schools are still trying to get caught up and back to normal. Um, and as we all know, the school year has been far from normal. Um, students are still needing the support to recover from those learning gaps. So um, before we dive into what each of us has experienced and seen personally, let's talk about the facts regarding COVID and what we've seen these past couple of years with standardized testing in particular. That would be great. Uh, comparing the spring CMAS, uh, for those people who doesn't know, CMAS stands for Colorado Measures of Academic Success. So from the scores from 2019 before the pandemic to scores from this past school year, on average, students' scores dropped 4.2% for grades 3 to 8. That, and the most significant drop was 8th grade math at 7.4%. That is shocking. Mm -hmm. We are so glad that we know this fact so that we can do something about it and help the children to plan and get caught up. Absolutely, yeah. And something to note about these statistics, too, is that participation rates for um, for standardized testing also dropped significantly during COVID because parents were able to opt their students out of testing. Um, so the data can tell us maybe not the whole story, but definitely giving us a good starting point for um, how we can get students back on track. So Lenny, from the parent perspective, I guess I'm wondering why do these statistics even matter? The fact that standardized test scores have dropped pretty significantly, why do you as a parent care about that? Well, just like other parents, I have a son, I have a, uh, I have a child as well, and my son is in high school right now and trying to go finish his high school, and of course, as a parent, I would like him to become better and prepared for everything, not only in school, in college, but in life. Mm -hmm. So with this test course getting lower, I'm going to question myself that if there's something missing, especially with my child's education, I need to do something about it so that he can fill in the gaps and then he can be successful in school. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of other parents, probably most other parents feel the exact same way. I can also imagine for elementary age students, their parents are probably particularly concerned because in elementary school, that's when students really gain those foundational skills um, in order to then succeed in middle school, high school, and beyond. Um, so not only have CMAS scores dropped, but school enrollment numbers have also declined over the past couple of years. So let's talk a little bit about that. That's right. Um, according to the CDE, or Colorado Department of Education website, up until 2019, there has been steady increase in students' enrollment of about 1 to 1.5% 1 each year. Then an enrollment drop of 3.3%. That is over 30,000 students from 2019 to 2020. And sure, enrollment numbers are starting to slowly increase, but we're still not quite back up to the enrollment numbers that we were seeing pre-pandemic. Yes, that's right. So the question is, what was happening with those students who, are, who were not enrolled in a brick and mortar schools? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so even though enrollment in physical schools dropped, enrollment in online learning actually grew roughly 43%. So that those students were team. still attending school, just online. Yes, and that, that is good to know. Well, Pearl, you were a high school teacher before, mm -hmm. and um, prior to pandemic, you were teaching. And during the pandemic, you were also teaching. 
And what was your experience that you can share saying about the, the pandemic before and then after during the online hybrid learning? Yeah. So um, for teachers, but also everyone involved, there was a huge mindset shift when the COVID pandemic hit, school shut down, and I'm sure you experienced this with your family, students, parents, administrators, and teachers all needed to figure out this new way of learning. Um, and so that was definitely challenging at first. And then the first full school year during the pandemic, we were um, a little bit hybrid. Some, t some days we were fully online, so students would sometimes come in person, sometimes attend classes from home. Um, and I did notice a change in engagement levels when it came to students who were logging in through Microsoft Teams from home mm -hmm. versus coming in person. Um, and it's really difficult to determine student growth solely anecdotally, but also solely on those numbers that we were talking about earlier, just because there are so many different factors that go into student growth and learning. Um, for example, last year, the 2021 school year, a lot of uh, a lot of teachers were giving students grace when it came to um, not assigning as much homework or being a little bit more lenient when it came to grading. Um, teachers also didn't get through as much curriculum as they normally would. So that definitely plays into student learning. And another factor for that is students have different home lives. Mm -hmm. So some students may have the ability to be very successful with online and hybrid learning, while others, they will have to have a resources and environment to be able to cope up and succeed through online learning. Right, absolutely. And even some schools, especially in rural areas, don't necessarily have those resources to help those families yes. that need either internet access or, or laptops. Chromebooks, right. laptop, and everything. Exactly, yep. yeah. Um, and so going back a little bit to Huntington, because uh, you, your business was also open during the pandemic. So can you tell me a little bit about what that was like or what you were seeing in regards to student learning at Huntington? Yeah, so ever since we opened here, we're already seeing like students coming to our center to go get extra help. But during the pandemic, we've seen a lot of students getting there to get help better. And um, Huntington made a survey during the pandemic that about 150 Huntington Learning Center across the country, uh, roughly there are 60% parents that were surveyed said that their student performance are better compared to previous years in school despite the pandemic. And I can surely say that uh, despite, the, despite the pandemic disruption in classroom learning and structure since the students are coming to us, they can get individualized learning and supplemental help as well because of the curriculum that we are providing the students, and then that will show improvements in students' learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's a really good point to bring up, that when students do receive this supplemental extra help outside of school, that it makes a big difference. And even from that same survey, we also learned that um, students still improved roughly 1.3 grade levels in reading and 2.1 grade levels in math, all in 48 hours of instruction at Huntington Learning Center. And that's got to tell you something, right? Because COVID mm -hmm. was still happening, students were still learning online, and yet they were still able to grow in those areas. Yes, and I can attribute that for having consistency in whatever you're doing makes the learning better. So the uh, moral of the story is that students who took advantage of the supplemental curriculum and ex extra support outside of the classrooms were able to go maintain and even grow in academic success. Absolutely. Yeah. And not even just from Huntington, right? But any sort of extra help makes a big difference. Because I know that some schools um, offer after school programs where students can come in and get homework help. And then a lot of schools also have peer tutoring programs. So um, student to student interactions, helping each other succeed in academics. So any kind of extra help you can give your students um, makes a difference. Yeah, that is right. And as a parent, uh, we need to encourage our children to advocate for themselves. And if they need help, they need to ask for it. Mm -hmm. Right, which is, I mean, definitely easier said than done because yeah. I know a lot of students struggle with that, but it's a great goal to work towards to, yeah, help your help students um, ask their teachers for help or just seek extra help no matter who they're talking to. Yeah. Um, so now that students are mostly back in person, we do want to remind everyone of some of the basic tips and tricks for being successful in school, 
And every week we are going to give students a tip on how to be better in school. So our tip for this week is... Our tip for the students to do for this week is the study space. So how are we going to be able to to go do that? Can you say something about that, Pearl? Yeah, so many of us have already heard the tip about finding a space free from distractions in which you can really focus on your schoolwork. Our tip is actually um, to find multiple study spaces that are free of distractions. That way, you're not continually sitting in the same area. That could feel a little maybe boring, monotonous. And so it's important to switch up your study space. That way you, you have a change of scenery in order to be most effective. Yes, and then the other suggestions for study space, aside from the bedroom that uh, most of the students are doing is that they can also do it in the kitchen table. But as long as there's no distractions, like the TV is off and then there's not a lot of movement in the kitchen, that could be a good way as well. And another way, they can go to coffee shops mm -hmm. and even in the library, that's going to be another option. Absolutely. Yeah, because, you know, I remember when I was in high school, I used to stay after school, go to the school library, um, and that was a really great distraction-free space for me to work, along with actually I did work at my kitchen table, um, but the TV for the most part wasn't on. So, um, yeah, just be careful to choose a place that is free of distractions um, and use your best judgment. That's correct. All right. I am here with Ethan Gonzalez. He is a senior at Discovery Canyon Campus High School in Colorado Springs. And I am going to ask him some questions about his experience in school during COVID. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the SAT and how he best prepared for that. So welcome, Ethan. Hi, thank you for having me. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell um, our listeners a little bit about yourself? Yes. Well, um, as mentioned, my name is Ethan Gonzalez, also known as the Ethan Gonzalez. Um, I um, am a senior currently in high school, but outside of school, I'm really into um, video editing and podcasting. So um, I create videos online on YouTube um, sort of to express my creativity. Um, you can find me at the Ethan Gonzalez on YouTube. And I also have a podcast where I talk mostly about my life and I'm um, giving different perspectives on things that aren't really talked about. You can find that as well by typing in the Ethan Gonzalez in any podcast streaming platforms and you'll find me there. Um, but yeah, I've um, started tutoring with um, Huntington for about three months and um, yeah. That's pretty much it. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, we're really excited to have you. And um, that's really cool that you're, you have your own YouTube channel. You have a podcast. That's awesome, especially for just being in high school, right? <laughs> um, so I'd first like to get a little information from you about what your experience has been like these last couple of years with COVID. So, um, you know, what, what maybe walk us through what it was like in the beginning of the pandemic when schools for, first shut down and how you've been able to kind of transition through the last couple of school years. Yeah, for sure. Um, I definitely feel like there has been a drastic change, um, especially, you know, finding out that the world is in a state where um, we don't even know what's going to happen. And, um, and so definitely school for me um, has changed a lot. I could say that it has become more uh, isolating um, in terms of how I'm not necessarily able to um, engage with teachers on a personal level, um, sort of telling them my um, struggles academically. Um, or even just uh, communicating. I feel like school um, definitely enables us kids to not only learn, obviously, but to communicate with others, which is very um, important um, when learning. And so it, it's just, it's been very different. However, I feel by the end, I kind of saw the blessing in disguise that came with um, this pandemic and this drastic change. Um, for example, personally, um, you know, I feel like there can come times where students um, often compete with each other. Um, and I feel like once you're isolated, um, you're more focused on yourself. And for me, I was able to visualize physically my own strengths and weaknesses academically and sort of cultivate them and sort of um, improve um, on my weaknesses and um, adjust them later. So um, I'd say that there are t pretty much good and bad things that come with the pandemic, but um, I still believe that everything happens for a reason. So 
Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, so can you talk a little bit about more of the celebrations that you saw these last couple of years? Like what, what are you most proud of? Um, uh, besides maybe just even just getting through the <laughs> pandemic. Yes, for uh, sure. But yeah, what are you most proud of from this last school year um, or two? I'd say I'm really most proud of, um, I guess, self-improvement mm -hmm. um, in terms of I was able to, as I mentioned, focus on myself a lot. Um, and this doesn't even have to be um, academically. This, this can also... Um, mean mental health you know mm -hmm. i've um i've just improved on that a lot and also just um taking care of myself and um recognizing what i need and um and yeah i feel like mm -hmm. that's one of um the things i can celebrate but another thing is also um being able to start my youtube channel which um to me is very important as um i'm able to express myself in a creative manner mm -hmm. um and yeah, I feel like, um, again, um, just with COVID, I mean, it isn't the best thing, but it has ultimately um, changed my life for the better. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I feel like the piece you were talking about related to mental health is in a way one of those blessings in disguise Definitely. that you mentioned earlier <laughs> um, that really this the pandemic gave people the opportunity to speak out about Definitely. mental health, um, yes, because yes. not a lot of people were talking about it in yes. the pandemic. Oh, right, so right. yeah, I think that's awesome. <laughs> um, and any, I know you, you mentioned some struggles with mental health, any other struggles that kind of came to light that you would be okay with sharing, um, that happened over the pandemic or, um, I know you also mentioned communication was oh, harder sure. with teachers. For sure. Um, I feel like, um, Back then, you know, from a high school perspective, I feel like um, I really struggled with um, the way I perceived myself. Um, and I think many high schoolers can relate to this, how um, in school, sometimes you happen to compare yourself a lot to people, not just mm -hmm. academically, but just um, in terms of how other people look and how um, other people are. And so um, I feel like with this, uh, you know, pandemic, um, one of the struggles that I was able to address is self-confidence mm -hmm. and sort of developing that, that yes, I am who I am and I should be proud of it because um, this is who I am. And so mm -hmm. um, I think that's definitely one of the things that I really can say that I'm proud that I um, sort of improved on during that time. Yeah, yeah. great. <laughs> well, and I will say adults struggle with that too. So I think it's <laughs> yeah. awesome that you... I have been able to learn from that at such mm -hmm. an early age. Um, so let's move, let's transition a little bit over to exam prep for and sure. Huntington and for SAT. Sure. Um, why did you decide to get help from Huntington initially? Um, well, I came to a point, uh, well, I'm at the point now where as a senior, I am deciding on um, what I want to do with my life, if I want to pursue in an, in an education after high school. And um, I feel like with... Um, you know, in this process of choosing what kind of colleges I want to go to and applying to different scholarships. Um, personally, uh, there were some things that I didn't quite meet um, in terms of um, standardized testing. Um, you know, I'm not really a type of guy who um, is perfect in all academics. I sort of, as an Asian American, I just sort of let it go let go of that idea of that I need to be perfect, that I need to um, have all straight A's. And so, um, however, I, I really wanted to um, try something new. And um, I feel like in this process, um, I definitely needed to um, receive some help academically so that I can move on um, after high school. And um, yeah. That's mm -hmm. pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, and you did, you were able to increase your score since you're yes. with Huntington, which is great. Yes. <laughs> um, what kind of, I guess, what do you attribute that increase to? Well, I feel like there are different um, factors personally, but um, the things that I sort of want to highlight is um, definitely hard work. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like 
you know, if you um, want to attain something in your life, if you want to accomplish something, you definitely need to um, put in hard work, as cliche as it may sound. But, um, but it's true. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Um, and you just come to a point where sometimes you need to persevere, but in the end, it's all worth it. I definitely believe that hard work pays off. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's definitely one. But another thing is... Um, also faith. I feel like um, having faith in self that you are able to do things that may seem impossible to do. I feel like, you know, maintaining that thought is really important. And even um, for others as well, like having faith in a higher power. Um, But also, I feel like um, another thing that Huntington really taught me was having a good mindset. Um, Academics can definitely affect you uh, mentally and the way you Uh, perceive yourself. For a while, I've um, sort of determined my own value by um, how I did academically, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I feel like entering in to a challenge with a good mindset can definitely improve your outlook and your perspective on different things, um, especially when you come across different challenges. Um, And lastly, I feel like um, another thing is having a a good community um willing to support you not willing to judge you um i used to be very ashamed of my own um sat scores going into huntington but i feel like um this team was able to help me um realize that it's okay to receive help to um to not be good at something and that um with practice um you can get better at anything Mm -hmm. so yeah nice yeah (laughs) Yeah, and we genuinely want to help, right? Definitely. And I would say that's true for all teachers is, sure. you know, they want to help their students yes. and they just need to know that you're looking for help and um, and then help is out there. Yeah, oh, certainly. Uh, mm-hmm. So with the test coming up, the SAT is coming up in April and yes. most students in Colorado are taking it on April 13th. Yes. <laughs> so we're getting ready. Um, what tips and tricks do you have for students who are preparing for the SAT right now? Um, I'd say one thing, first and foremost, if you're listening to this, if you're a student here in Colorado um, who is anticipating the SATs, I'd say don't freak out. Um, I feel like um, just calm down. (laughs) Um, For me, I was just so... um, I was just so scared when I took my own SATs when really it's... It's nothing to worry about. Again, I feel like everything happens for a reason. Um, So don't stress out on that. But also another thing is um, take care of yourself. Um, I I feel like even now I'm just really emphasizing on um, take caring of oneself, taking care of oneself, excuse me. And um, because I feel like um, even in my school, I see many people who sort of, prioritize their, you know, um, grades over everything to where it affects their mental health and um, the way that they look at themselves. And I I just want to say that um, if you're listening to this, you are awesome just the way you are, even if you um, aren't perfect academically. Um, And even if you are, that's great. But even if you're not, then, you know, you are still you are still amazing and you could definitely contribute. something to to your to your world essentially and so um that's another thing but in terms of academics i'd say that um one thing is to um not necessarily stress on um your weaknesses but rather um acknowledge them and sort of um speak out if you need to Mm -hmm. um it's always okay to get help from someone. Don't ever be ashamed to ask questions. Um, and honestly, I feel like that's pretty much it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah so that's great. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and you're going to UCCS next year, yes, which is super exciting. <laughs> so, um, yeah, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to come here, be interviewed. Uh, I'm sure a lot of students will really benefit from from hearing this information from thank you. Thank you. All right, well, this has been The Huntington Way. My name is Pearl Sun and Shine, and thank you for joining me this week. We look forward to seeing you next time.